Anthony, when I was a child, about 12 years old, uh, one summer I was in bed thinking about things, and suddenly I realized, what if there were nothing at all? And I got so scared, I repressed the thought for decades, and I knew there was something that was on my mind, and then, and then finally I remembered it, and it's really refocused me on the, the big question, why is there something rather than nothing, which is so much more fundamental than does God exist, for example? How do we even begin to address that question? Well, as you know, it happens in contemporary physics. There's some uh, discussion about the possibility that it's quite hard for there to be nothing. I mean, quantum uh, reality tells us that the spontaneous emergence of uh, elementary particles is a statistical necessity, if you, if you like. But, but that, I don't know that, that that's a, a but way... But that's because there's laws of physics, of quantum physics, that determines the characteristics of empty space. That's not nothing. Well, that's true. <laughs> uh, empty space is not nothing, <laughs> so, uh, which is a good start. Um, I, I think, and, and, and I think this very seriously, that there are sorts of questions that we can ask ourselves which are strictly um, meaningless and, for that reason, unanswerable. And the question, why is there something rather than nothing, falls into the same category of questions as, if there were an omnipotent being, could it eat itself for breakfast? Or, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the sort of question which makes grammatical and lexical sense, but actually doesn't give us a possible concept. What color is the letter three? What color is the letter three? <laughs> Can green ideas sleep furiously? This kind of thing. A lot of, a lot of mistakes are being made. But when we ask a question, it presupposes uh, that, that there is an answer of a category suited to the nature of the question. And in, in questions of ultimate generality, or questions which have the appearance of being grammatically well-formed, it may really be that, they, that there isn't anything behind them at all. And there is a particular reason for this, and that is that language is an iterative device. Uh, on a finite uh, stock of, of words with a finite set of grammatical rules, you can generate an infinite number sure. of well-formed, grammatically well-formed sentences, which may nevertheless be meaningless. Mm -hmm. And there are perfectly exa perfect examples to something. I say, I can uh, um, trisect an angle using only ruler and compass, uh, <laughs> for example. So it may very well be that that question, why is there something rather than nothing? Uh, could there be nothing? Um, is something necessary? Or th those sorts of questions, and there are a family of them that you yeah, can yeah, try yeah. and formulate again right, and right. again. All of them get no grip on a possible answer. And that's that's a, a position. It's a it's a position of last resort. Uh, and once you believe that, you, you're at a full stop. But you're at a full stop with a full form universe that you got, and and uh, and, and and you can't do anything. And the question is: Is that question? Is there something rather than nothing? That kind of question, the color of the, per, of, of the letter three. I, I mean, the question is, is that question the same? Can you conceive? I mean, I can conceive of there being nothing. That's what scared me when I was a kid. Well, compared to the kinds of questions that do have uh, answers you can begin to reach for, do some work for, um, given that there is something, what is it? What's it like? What is its ultimate nature? What's its structure? Uh, what is there, uh, what, what in what there is really matters? What's of value? Now, those sorts of questions have juice in them. You, you can get to grips with them and you can, you can start to figure out answers for them. And you may make tremendous discoveries in the process of trying to answer those questions. But uh, a, a question which you know, has the character of, a, of a, a, an immensely tall glass tube that you're expected to climb up and you never will get to the top <laughs> is, a, is a kind of futile a self-defeating question. Is this um, a, a throwback to the logical positivism where if, if I can't sense it or I, it's not a logical deduction, it's meaningless? Uh, well, no, not really. Um, and that, that indeed is what the positivists thought, that there are a range of, of uh, uh, utterances which, in fact, because nothing counts as a test of them, mm -hmm. um, are, are meaningless for that reason. They don't make sense. They're strictly speaking, nonsensical. Th th this is a, a grammatically well-formed sentence which... Uh, seduces us into thinking that there has to be some wonderfully deep, uh, uh, you know, tremendous um, answer, if only we knew how to reach out for that kind of answer. The sorts of answers that you people give... You sound like give, a good preacher. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the sorts of answers that people give, why is this something rather than nothing? Because Fred wanted it or Fred made it or, or something. Uh, the, the, the themselves, of course, only extend the vacuity of them. <sighs> Yet... We can conceive of there being nothing, and yet there is something. 
are you saying that it is utterly meaningless question or that it is not able to be answered? Very different approaches because the latter is, is a brute fact. Bertrand Russell said something to the fact that the universe is here and that's all. I mean, he refused to say anything more about it, which was, I think, his way of saying it's a brute fact and we can't know. Now, that's a fair answer. It may or may not be true, but, but it's a defensible position. So I'm not sure if you're saying that it's a brute fact, that there is something, or it's really a meaningless question and, we, and, and, and it doesn't make any sense. Well, two different things. I mean, it is a brute fact that there is something that, that I think we all agree on, <laughs> or had better. <laughs> um, but, but, but it without is... A, brute fact means without explanation. Oh, so, okay. The, the, well, um, I, 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 no, I, don't, I certainly don't mean that. I, I mean... It, well, I mean, a, that, that, that there is something. Yeah. I, I'm not, this universe can't be explained in a lot of physics. I'm not talking about that. That there is something at all rather than nothing is a brute fact. Yeah. We agree okay. on that. No, no, on, on, no. That, on that definition of bruteness, I think we have to just say it's a fact that the universe exists and there are all sorts of interesting questions we can ask about it and should ask about sure, it. Sure, sure. But, but, but to get back to our, our question, the, the, meaningless of the meaninglessness of the question is relative to its unanswerability. What makes a question un, uh, uh, empty or, or meaningless? The fact that nothing counts as a, an answer to it. Well, but that's a presupposition. Well, I mean, the, the, this is on the I mean, basis I don't, of... I don't have an answer, that's for sure, but I, I, it's not just because you say it doesn't mean there isn't an answer. Well, I, I think it does. I mean, it's not just that uh, I'm uh, you know, anticipating future discoveries of an answer to this question. Uh, what, what I'm doing is I'm saying it has a certain kind of logical character. Mm -hmm. think, think of something uh, similar. Think of a, um, uh, a question like this. If I said, I am here, could I ever be wrong? Now, we know that whenever you say, I am here, that's a self-verifying mm -hmm. uh, truth. I am wherever I am. So if mm -hmm. ever I say, I am here, I'm here. Yeah. So if I ask the question, could it ever be the case that saying, I am here, I, I would be uttering a falsehood, is, as you can see, despite being a, a grammatical <laughs> sentence, a sort of meaningless one. It's missed the whole point. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm saying about this kind of question, that it's a logical reason why it makes no sense, because it's a logical fact about that kind of question, like the question, can an omnipotent being eat itself for breakfast? It's a logical reason why... So if I give you that, if I go with you on that, what would seem to follow is that because there is something, I can't. that question is meaningless, but there is something, therefore that something, whatever it is, has to be a brute fact. Well, again, Is that, is that a consequence? Does that follow directly from what you said? N not if we're going to use your definition of bruteness, uh, um, because if bruteness means inexplicable or unexplained, or, or if it means inexplicable, yes. that's one thing. If it means unexplained, that's just a, a matter of history, because it might be explained uh, in the future. I, I, I see. So yeah. we're, we're getting into semantics here, which may, <laughs> no, may not be too that's helpful. That's an interesting point. I see that, yeah. If we, think of, if we were to think of other kinds of questions we might ask, could there be... That's the point. There is no other question that has that same character to it. There, there are ones that sound nice and, and that are very interesting and that are interesting in themselves, but I really doubt there's any question that could be put in the category of why is there something rather than nothing. <laughs> But, but there are kinds of questions which have the same logical character, like this one. Why is everything not bigger than it is? Or uh, couldn't it be the case... It's that self-subsuming. It, 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 it assumes itself within the question. Exactly. But if you take that for why there is something rather than nothing, it's saying that something exists uh, necessarily. And that, that's a definition of brute fact. Well, uh, I, I'm, again, I'm, uh, I'm troubled by, by, by the, the fact, factual nature of it and the bruteness of the fact in question. <laughs> but when it's not a matter of facts, it seems to me a, a matter more of logic, that we're talking about the kind of question that we could make sense of that would give it meaning. And what gives meaning to questions is the capacity we have for answering them.